My name is Marie Soria. I'm president of Paramount Animation. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you have to understand, for me to speak about technology, I would go home and tell my husband and kids, yeah, I'd be in this IT meeting, and they would just like look at me and laugh, and I'd say, I know they were very polite to me and listened and asked my opinion, and I was like, and they, would, my kids just laugh because I, I am not technological. But what is unbelievable, and what I feel, I've, I've gotten to know many of of the great people who work in effects and who work in IT and creating the tools that we use is that we're all focused on the same thing, which is how do we make it, how, do, how can we make an exciting movie, how can we make a movie that's great. And I think that um, uh, it's also about, uh, I say to artists who have to transition in using new tools, is that what is important and valuable is inside of you, is the art, you bring the artistry to whatever you do. The technology allows you to do it in a way that's either faster or better or more, uh, more. <laughs> when it comes to uh, animation, especially CGI today, can you talk a little about the role that plays in this evolving Hollywood, which seems to be built now around a lot of superheroes and, and, and animated movies seem to be at the top of the rung these days? I think that um, actually the lines have been blurred between what is an animated movie and what is not, you know, um, because of the technology. When you have the superhero movies are half animated, you know, you have uh, John Favreau's Jungle Book is completely animated yet looks realistic. Um, I think that what that means is a lot of times it, it forces us to say, why are we doing this story in animate, as an animated movie versus a live action? Um, so what's great about that is that it pushes us to really say, let's do something that you can't do for under $300 million in live action. So how do we create these worlds? How can we, you know, um, sometimes the, the, the answer is obvious. It's about talking animals. And, you know, sometimes it's obvious because of the vision of the filmmaker and that it's this whole other world or the style of it is different than ours. Um, but I think it's good. It pushes us to try to do better. What's it been like when it comes to talking animals of being able to explore stories on the big screen but also have digital and, and television series uh, availability as well today. Yeah, I think that's the goal, you know. I love it that people have fallen in love with these characters so much that they want to see them in different forms. I also believe, having started in television, that developing the story for television is very, is, is can be very different than in a live act, than a feature, for example. This, every, you know, for example, for a series, you really need great characters. People come back because they love those characters. That's why they come back every week or watch and binge watch. They fall in love with those characters. You do need a good story. You need an engine and all that. But the main thing I, th I always felt in developing for television were those characters. In a feature, it's really the story. You need great characters, but the story, you need a story that has a beginning, middle, and end, right, that feels fantastic enough. Um, I think it's I think it's wonderful. Our goal is are to create franchises, is to create a world that allows you to have um, all the you know to have the games and the toys and the all of it. It's wonderful when that happens. I mean, there's nothing more exciting than to go and see a you know I I uh, I didn't produce Trolls, but I I was. Uh, co-president of DreamWorks and oversaw the movie. And I was in a little town, Ashland, North Carolina, and there was this little girl going by, and I had to stop and I took a picture to send it to the people on the movie. And she had, her hair was done up, and what kind of, I don't know how she did it, lots of hairspray, and sprayed in a color, and she was dressed like Poppy. And it was like unbelievably exciting to see that. So it's great when that happens. And you just mentioned uh, games, but also we're seeing more and more exploration with virtual reality. What yes. has that opened up for, for these types of characters? I think that's a world that is um, uh, really exciting, but still yet to be seen how it evolves. I'm an advisor on the board of Baobab. I know Kane Lee is here also this week. I'm excited to see him. Um, and it's been really a learning experience for me working with them and working with Eric, I, I advise on, on script and, and see it as it progresses and, and discuss, uh, discuss it in notes with, with Eric Darnell. 
Um, it's interesting because it's a different way of telling a story. You have to think without edits. So what is it that gets your attention? So I, I love that kind of stuff. I love um, the idea of thinking of a short story in a different way. Um, but I think it's, it remains to be seen how, how, uh, what the evolution of that is. And we just had Hans Zimmer uh, speak, and it also, VR takes a different, uh, puts, puts sound more front and center than no even question. film does. No question. So yeah. that's an interesting exploration of how to get your eyes to move. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, I can tell you, Kane will tell you about it, but in Baobab, their, their latest um, is Rainbow Crow, and John Legend uh, is a producer on it and a voice, and also created the music for it. And the music is a big part of it, it's really exciting.